Hey, welcome everybody. It's time once again for another episode of Closing the Wealth Gap. Because you know the problem. The rich are getting richer and the poor, well, we're going in the wrong direction. There's a widening wealth gap in this country. It's well reported. We're going to see if we can't give you some ideas how to catch up and close the wealth gap in your life with the man who's closed it for millions, Tyrone French. Hey, Tyrone. Paul, 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 how you doing today, buddy? <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul. I always think I'm doing good, and then we do this show, and I think, man, I <laughs> am falling further and further behind here, buddy. I'm not closing the wealth gap. I'm, uh, I'm making it bigger. Hey, this show was designed to solve that problem. And, I, you know, I read a very interesting article this morning from the, um, uh, the Fed chairman. Yeah. And what right. he was saying is that we're in a situation right now where this is the new north. This is the new economy. And people have to get used to this new economy because we're not going back to the way things used to be. Yeah. And what he was saying is that, you know, it's already impacting women and minorities the worst. Yeah, disproportionately, the COVID has uh, affected those two groups the most. Not much reported, but I've, I I read uh, Chairman Powell's comments. I was chilled by his assessment that whatever comes out of this, it ain't going to be the same thing. We're going to have more, more remote work. We're going to have more uh, distance learning. We're going to have more jobs that are outsourced and not in person anymore here. And if you ain't ready for that, you're going to be constantly whining about what you've lost and the other people are going to be pulling ahead of you. So my suggestion is during this downtime, when people are isolating themselves and self coining teams, uh, you need to really, uh, you know, get on the internet or find resources that can give you a step-by-step synopsis as far as how to position yourself technically for this how do you get ready yeah how do you get ready for this boom that's getting ready to take place as far as most people working from home and uh, and telecommuting yeah and like i said it's it goes it's going to go into people's habits their, their behavior and their habits and that we don't talk about habit is a lot of advisors don't talk about habit a lot of uh, financial um professionals and, and czars and gurus don't talk about habits. They, they'll talk about a vehicle, mm-hmm. stocks, bonds, mutual funds, life insurance, but they never get into the core habit as far as what drives everything. Mm-hmm. Because you can have all the knowledge in the world. If you lack that behavior or that specific activity to produce that result, it's not going to do you a bit of good. Amen. You think that the world has gone crazy and, and nothing works anymore, but it goes back to that 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 old grandma that was in the kitchen that had a recipe for pound cake. Yeah, and she <laughs> mastered it. Yeah, and the other the other family members, you know, they they got the recipe, but it didn't turn out right. Yeah, it didn't turn out the same, and it's because they didn't put as much time and energy and thought as grandma put into it. And those years of experience of finding out what works and what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And we live in this microwave economy to whereas now people, they want it instantaneously. Boy, that's the truth. You know, they worked on, they could have worked on their job for like maybe 10, 15 years. Mm-hmm. And let's say they're making $20, $25 an hour. But now they find themselves at home. They may want to start a business or, or, or you know, whatever it is, uh, some work from home opportunity, and they immediately want to make $50, $100 an hour mm-hmm. without having the, the skill set or the experience or the knowledge to do that. And it's not to say that it can't be done. It's to say that, you know, you have to change your, your mindset now as to the environment that we're in right now. And I can tell you what, the coaches are out there. The advisors are out there. They spent years planning for this. And I can give you an example where I had a... a Well, that's why we're tuning into the show here. You say, go find some resources. I don't have time to go get a college education on this subject here. I don't know where to find the books and the curriculum and the courses and to figure it all out. I need a coach. I need a guide. That's why I come to you. Well, I'll tell you what. Like I said, uh, about a year ago, two years ago, 
uh, was dealing with a publicist and she said, hey, Tyrone, you know, we need to broaden your audience mm-hmm. and we need to start having these workshops and these seminars. And I, I was like, no, nah, I really don't want to do workshops and seminars where we, we invite people in, we fill up the room, uh, give them lunch or dinner. I said, you know, every a lot of advisors have done that mm-hmm. and it doesn't work. It, it doesn't work Can't because take, you'll you'll get you'll go to that lunching meaning that meaning that the motivation is off. A lot of people go in there for the dinner. They're going there for the lunch instead of really taking the time to absorb the information that they're receiving. Well, let me give you another way to look at it. You're you're uh, you like I was uh, raised in a good Christian household here, and uh, you know periodically we'd go get down and we'd get some religion. We'd go down and we'd uh, you know Grandma would drag us down to the revival or someplace, and it was all about getting saved. How long did it stick? Because nothing changed. For a night or two, it felt great. But when we got back to it, we just fell into the old habits. <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned it because it's almost like, like, like I said, you go to that church service and you'll hear and they say, oh, church was wonderful tonight. It's like, well, and the pastor, he was great. It's like, well, what did he talk about? Uh, I don't know, but it was great. <laughs> yeah. It was great. Yeah, right. So it's the same thing as far as somebody, you know, telling you about life insurance or an annuity or a mutual fund. You're sitting, while you're sitting there with that advisor, it, it somewhat makes sense because of the enthusiasm that the advisor has or mm-hmm. the research that they've done. But the, you leave that office or you leave that environment and you're right back where you were. So you have to have a platform now to whereas you can take the time to research and study that information and then have a, a, a go-to to where it's uh, just like having a, a teacher mm-hmm. or uh, uh, it, you're doing your homework and you're stuck. So you're able to get on the phone and speak with that resident uh, advisor Mm -hmm. to work you through that problem. Do we? That's where we are right now as a society. Do we all need accountability? And boy, believe me, I don't want anybody looking over my shoulder telling me what. Hey, did you do that? Did you do your homework? I had enough of that as a kid. When I became an adult, nobody's going to tell me what to do like that again. But. You know what? Do we need some accountability? Do we need to check in and go, oh, geez, I'm meeting with my advisor. I'm meeting with my coach here. I didn't do any of the stuff he said I should do. And it motivates you. It, it Almost like a little kid, it forces you to to do what you said you were going to do. Absolutely. And it it's like a mirror, though. And it, it's like a mirror and a, um, and, a, uh, and, a, and a light that's shining on you. And all of a sudden, it's like, like you say, you, oh, I got to meet with my advisor and I didn't do anything that he told me to do or she told me to do. And all of a sudden, you just hear this music in the background. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll find that. So dun. now the meeting dun, is dun, like, dun. oh, it's, there's so much stress. Yeah. You know, there's so much drama. And it goes back to mindset. Because when you, Paul, think about this. When you really, when there's something that you really want to do, mm-hmm. No one on this planet has to make you do it. That's right. They don't have to That's right. make you put the time and the effort in. That's right. Because, because you like it and you enjoy you it. Want. You live for it. Yeah, exactly. But but the, the tedious stuff. I used to have a friend. This is going to sound silly, but maybe somebody will nod out there. Somebody, somebody say amen to this one too here. The only time he cleaned his house is when the house cleaner was coming because he was embarrassed <laughs> what a mess it was. And so he would run around and start to clean up the house. I said, what are you doing? Oh, I got to clean up. House cleaners coming. That's their job. I know, but I don't want to think I'm a slob. You know, they exactly. they forced. We we all have these childlike habits that we put off tomorrow, even though we know it's good for us today. I tell you what, financially, guess who the modern day uh, housekeeper is for hmm. getting people to get themselves together financially? It's COVID nineteen. Mm, wow, boy, that's COVID, true. COVID nineteen is is like the housekeeper now that you don't want to have everything that's organized when it gets there. Mm-hmm. And so we're in this time right now where we're talking to people today that may not be here thirty days from now, sixty days from now, oh, ninety days from now. Yeah. That, and that's a terrible thought. Right, it's a terrible thought. But because of that reality, people are now looking at their estate, saying, "Do I have enough life insurance?" Do I have a will? Mm-hmm. Do I have a living trust? Do I have I prepared? Have I cleaned house enough? My right. financial house, right? Is it my financial house in order? 
And that's what those are the conversations that people are having now. I'll bet it's a mess for most of us. It is in my life. Uh, and I keep thinking, yeah, I'm going to do it. You know what it's like? It's like earthquake preparedness. We had somebody on a while ago. I don't know when this was, but they had the big you know, earthquake shake out here in California. And they prep and they people volunteer. And we all get excited for a week. We all say we're going to go get water. And I, every year I'm going to go get water and blankets. I'm going to go through a plan. I'm going to talk to my family. All this stuff that's so simple to do. And I don't think I've done it in 20 years. Little bits, you here know. And there. I, I like what um, um, there's a guy. I uh, can't think of his name right now. It'll come to me in a minute. But he said, "What's easy to do is easy not to do." Boy, that's the truth. Yeah, say that again. That's worth repeating. What's easy to do, and again, these are not my words. Uh, uh, there's a famous. Uh, it'll come to me in a minute. His name, but what's easy to do is easy not to do. And it's like little nuggets like that that just, you know, that's going like the subroutine that's going on in your subconscious mind right. that's driving you to keep it, keeping you moving forward uh, to do the things. Once you come to the knowledge of something, Paul, now you're responsible for it. Yeah. You right. know, they, they'll say ignorance is bliss. And so you don't know what you don't know. But once you come into the knowledge of something, now that's when responsibility kicks in. Yeah. And then you have, you make a choice whether or not you want to. You want to deal with it or kind of put it back, put it on the back burner. Well, this is the second part of your very popular first show on Family Bank, the family nest egg, family wealth. And the takeaway I got from that one is we all have a family bank or we should have a family bank because we uh, we're, it's not just for the wealthy. The wealthy coined this term and we all know they've got trusts and wills and giant assets that – that produce revenue for them without them doing anything. Uh, passive income that you're always preaching here. Have the money rolled in. I- invest wisely and put the money to work for you. Don't just put it in a, a mattress somewhere and forget about it. But that notion of a family bank, expand on that a little bit. A family nest egg, whatever analogy you want to come up with, it's a, it's – it's the source of wealth for not just you, but your family and future generations. Well, let me, let me tell you something that wealthy people know, and especially their advisors. They understand that that wealth that's being accumulated or being accumulated in the first generation mm-hmm. is only going to last for two, three, maybe four generations at most. Yeah, talk about that for a second. At but, most. Be, and, and is that just because it runs out or is it because they blow it or both? It, it runs out because it's mismanaged. Right. See, the, 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 the second and third generation don't have the same motivation as the first generation of wealth right. because they created it. They Let's say they created the family bank or they had the, the vision. They created saying, the family you know what, business. I yeah, want right. to pass down wealth from generation to generation. I want my children's children to be better off than, than I am. So maybe they got the business started. And maybe they uh, took it from a, a, a sole proprietor and they incorporated it. Or let's say it was always a sole proprietor. It paid the bills. Mm-hmm. It laid the foundation. Mm-hmm. The next generation, they built upon it. So mm-hmm. let's say they, they decided to incorporate the business. They decided to use corporate credit. They decided to find investors, meaning that they mm-hmm. took the business public. Mm-hmm. Then the next generation, that's the norm for them as far as having all these resources, all these assets to be able to capitalize their ideas. And guess what? Because they didn't really have to work for it or it came very easy. They don't have the same motivation to learn how to, how it was established and how to keep it going or the passion for it. They they dump it. The fruits of the labor. It's happened. I give you a hundred examples of that. Uh, Newspaper families, the the Chandler family or the uh, Hoyles family here in Orange County that owned the register. Grandpa started it or great grandpa started it. And uh, the second generation tried to prove, well, we're not idiots. We're going to improve upon it. But about the third generation, they grow up with it. It means nothing to them. It was just handed to them. It's and and they have no interest in it. They have no passion for it. They didn't create it. They didn't uh, grow it. All they did is just profit from it. And uh, too often they treat it too casually. They don't pay any attention to it. They dump it and get rid of it. Let's just cash it in and and take the money. 
or they want to prove I'm not an idiot and I can build my own business and they start to take wild speculation and, and do it. Or, or, or I'm sorry, the rich person's disease. They snort it up their nose. You know, it's just too easy. It just, the money's never going to run out. It's just there. Yeah, and the, de- the technical term for that is the spendthrift. Yeah. And so the, the family bank, they'll put a family bank in place just for that spend that uh, spend thrift as far as somebody that doesn't care all they want to do is live off this perpetual income and they could care less whether it's going to be preserved for future generations mm-hmm. but there's a book Paul there's a guy his name is um, James E. Hughes Jr. Okay. and he wrote this book called Family Wealth and I recommend I highly recommend that the listeners Go out and get that book. Let's put it in there. When you post this, put that in the show notes there so someone can link to it on Amazon. You know, when you you write the show post, put that in there. Yeah. Right. But it talks about that family bank. It talks about having those family meetings. And it talks about how uh, you're educating, meaning that the matriarch and the patriarch is at those meetings. Mm -hmm. The kids are at that meeting. The grandkids are at that meeting. And so they get a sense of importance or they get a sense of uh, accountability and responsibility as to with how the business generated uh what is the what's the vision for the business and what is the overall business or vision for uh the next generation to maintain it now i know that a lot of our viewers are not on that level as far as the the, the super rich or mm-hmm. or uh, the super wealthy but the one thing that people can do, again, based based on this COVID environment that we're in, is just making sure that they've done the necessary things, uh, making sure that you're like, you have life insurance, mm-hmm. uh, making sure that you have a will. If you do have a will, make sure that your will is updated. Uh, making sure that if you have I, properties you, you gotta stop in California. Me. I have no idea what you mean, subdated. I have no idea what that means. So I just wrote a will. Wait, say that again? All of this, my, I have no idea you said subdated. I don't know what that means. Oh, so. I, I, it came off. What I meant to say was, uh, if, I, if I said subdated, I meant update. I need well, to updated, make sure okay. that your will is updated. updated. Got it. Okay. You said subdated, and I thought, oh, there must be something I don't understand here. All right, so well, we got this. We got this audio connection. You're going in and out, so some of the things. Hopefully, we can go back and clean this up a little bit. Okay, but yeah, you want to make sure that your will is good. updated. You also want to make sure uh, if you got 401ks or mutual funds and things like that, uh, make sure that your beneficiary statements are correct and updated. Mm. And let me give an example. You had a situation where uh, you know husband and wife uh, they were together for a while. They decided to go their separate ways, and the the husband remarried mm. and he never changed the beneficiary on the life insurance Ooh. well the husband passed away and the wife put in the claim and guess what no he go. didn't get the money no the go. money went to the ex-wife Wow, I know that's a re- in a in a world where half of marriages still end in divorce. Uh, there's a lot of that complication going on. My kids, your kids, somebody's kids. Uh, uh, you know, and and it goes to many issues. We had Casey Kasem's daughter. Remember Casey Kasem, the famous yes. DJ? She started yes. a foundation when uh, she's the first family of Casey Kasem. He got divorced later on. Divorced this girl's mother and married again. And there was a mess because when he is failing and has Alzheimer's and doesn't know where he is, the first wife won't let the, or the second wife won't let the first wife see him or the kids. And so they were playing hide the body and they're moving them all over the place and stuff here, you know, down to that granular level, you may not even have the ability, forget about whatever you're going to inherit. You can't even see the guy. Exactly. The fights that go on in these families over what's going to happen when he finally dies is. And, and you know, I read somewhere else, it, we all assume that the fights are only at the big level. Nobody's going to fight over my stuff. Not true. Uh, in Not many true. cases, the biggest fights are over the littlest assets. Not just because it's money, because it's sentimental. I, Dad said he was going to give me that. No, no, Dad gave, him, gave me that. Dad didn't write it down. So now we get a big fight over who gets the house or the car or the old 
a set of golf clubs or whatever it's whatever emotional attachments you have to these things it can become a very big mess Paul, i got a here's an example i got to have a client and his brother passed away mm-hmm. and there, his brother had a had a had a he was into trains and train sets yeah right. and not just the, not it was almost not like a a hobby but it was almost like an obsession yeah, he had right. this beautiful beautiful train set mm-hmm. and do you know that these brothers uh they end up going to court and they spent thousands thousands yeah, of over dollars dad's trains yeah right on this on this train set and and, and the judge finally cuz it had gone on for a long time um everybody knew what was going the lawyers were making money yeah and so the judge pulled them both together and said you know what is this really about right what is this really about and the issue was that uh, it went, went back to that respect issue. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought that they should have come to me and told me certain things and explained certain things to me. And so you're right. I, you know, I've seen people fight over dresses. Yeah. Oh. And suits, and coats and eyeglasses. In my wife's family, when her parents died, the, the her two sisters, they got in a big fight over some I don't know, it wasn't even worth anything, some china and some stuff. But everybody said, Mom promised me that. No, Mom, Mom. well, Mom always liked you the best. Well, Mom said she was going to give this to me. And, oh, it brought out all of this sibling rivalry and fighting for for nothing, nothing. And, and guess what solves that problem? Just having a will. Yeah, right. Just making sure. And, again, I'm not suggesting that anyone go out and, and create their own holographic will or, or in their own handwriting. Don't do that. If you're gonna get, if you're gonna get a will, <laughs> Make speak it real. to a professional. Speak to an attorney. Right. You know, because I, again, I've heard it. I've heard people say, "Well, yeah, I got this will, and I had the, uh, I got the will notarized." It's like, well, no, you don't notarize a will. The will needs to be witnessed. We need to do a whole show on wills and and probate and all that kind of stuff. A family trust me, because that's a. I'm still shocked how many people, having gone through it a couple of times now, with both my parents gone and my wife's parents gone, uh, it's a mess. But let's go back to the fa- to, let's wrap up today with the family bank. Do I have a family bank? I, I'm not that big. Have I got a family bank? What's 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 in my family bank? I'm going to go home and say, well, "Honey, you- where's the family bank?" She's going to go, "I don't know." <laughs> a family bank could be it. It's just something that family members come together. Even, let's say if you don't have the money to fund uh, your visions or your, to fund a family project, people. One thing that's the one thing they say there's two things that you can be uh, really uh, you know that's going to happen, death and change. Yeah, Ooh. they used to say taxes, but you know there's a lot of people that, that get away with. with <laughs> that's not but so permanent death, anymore. <laughs> but it's, it's death and change. Those yeah. two things that you can uh, you can bank on those. That's going to happen. So no pun intended. No pun intended. You can bank on that. To, uh, yeah. Exactly. Right. So knowing that those that's going to occur. And there's a life insurance policy on the matriarch or the patriarch or the husband or the wife. That's income tax free money Mm -hmm. that can be set aside for the family bank for future generations. Now, you could have lived payday to payday. Right. But you still have. You could have lived. Yeah. You could be in debt when you die. But there is. You can be in debt. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But if that's your if that's the vision to have a family bank and to and to change the trajectory of your family, then the easiest way to do that is with life insurance. Mm-hmm. The second easiest the second easiest way to do it is by owning your own business, mm-hmm. because a lot of people may have a you may have a a, a a a good paying job with benefits, but when you pass away. You can't pass down that good paying job with benefits to your son or to Mm-mm. your daughter. Mm-mm. No, that goes but with you. You can do it if you you can do it if you've established your own business. Well, how so about I'm just telling owning... you one of the methods how that a lot say... of people use yeah. is to make sure that they have that family bank. So that... let's list a couple other things that can be in the family bank. Insurance. I didn't think about it. So I'm gonna go home and say, Well, honey, we got insurance, don't we? Oh yeah, that's in the family bank. I forgot about that. Uh, uh your home. You got some equity your in your home. home. Could be in the family bank. Homes uh, in the precious family. Precious metals. Now there I'm going to go. tell you, precious metals right now are going. A lot of people are focused on 
gold and silver mm -hmm. and gold and silver are those items to whereas it's almost gold and shit and silver is like currency insurance mm -hmm. or insurance for your currency or for your money mm -hmm. i mean to use an analogy based on that that life insurance theme what it's doing is insuring your future purchasing power mm -hmm. so you could have made thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in the 1950s and 60s fast forward today that money that you that you thought was really good money that you made in the 50s and 60s uh, is a quarter or six months worth of income. My dad so, used to rail about that before my dad died several years ago. My dad, anybody that's listening to the show knows, he was an executive with Chrysler Corporation. Rags to riches. Started off on the assembly line, ended up becoming a vice president in Chrysler Corporation. Something that doesn't happen much anymore here. And in his heyday... He died in his 90s a few years ago. So in his heyday, which was been the 60s, he was making $30,000 a year. But a house cost $30,000 a year. And okay. I, our, our, our big house that was huge was cost $50,000 or whatever. And what struck him is when he came to retire and live off of that retirement for 20, 30 years, you know, 30 years, his retirement was based on $30,000 a year income. Uh, it right. was nothing. It was ridiculous. So, uh, you know, he didn't he, he didn't understand that uh, principle of inflation that uh, that robbed him of uh, all that. Now, the house went up in value, thank goodness. But the the pension that was based on his income, the never income. Did. Yeah, exactly. And that's the number one reason. I mean, believe it or not, why people have to go back to work. It's not that they don't ha didn't have enough money. It's because of the money that they had had been was being devalued over time, and the, that term is monetary devaluation. Inflation yeah. is something based on productivity, meaning that because of productivity, things started to go up. Mm -hmm. No, monetary devaluation is based on the market, the economy being flooded with extra dollars, and those dollars are worth less. Yeah. Now that was that was the biggest shock to him, as he said, "I thought I was set for life." And uh, he wasn't. Uh, and it was only things he acquired later. He, he did, did go back to work as a consultant, and that money, he made more money, and he put it because he didn't need it. He invested it into stocks. He invested it into other sorts of property and other sorts of things. And that's that really is what saved him. It wasn't the 40 years he worked for Chrysler Corporation in a big job. That, well, I tell you. I tell you what, though, Paul, and you just nailed it as far as people making these investments into stocks and things like that. But when you're doing that, you're investing in other people's companies. Yeah. And again, I have I have nothing against that. But let's the average stock market return is ten percent, you know. And we're talking about annual well, annual return, right? Whereas if you had the the wherewithal to start your own business, even part time, you can get a a, a five hundred percent return annual return. And I'm not talking about in a year. I'm talking about in a month. So I'll give you the flip side of that. My dad uh, had a housekeeper, uh, a woman that uh, after when my mother died, he couldn't take care of the house. So for man, ten... you're on this housekeeper theme today, huh? Yeah, I'm on the housekeeper <laughs> theme. I don't know why, but she. I just remember she came to me afterwards, and, and I we all thought she was just kind of a nice, simple person who lived a simple life and probably didn't have a nickel to her name, but worked very hard uh, taking care of my dad's house once a week and everybody else's house in the neighborhood. And my God, she had a lot of money because she took that money and bought property. She owned her house outright and she had side businesses. She used to have Coca-Cola machines that she filled up all over the place. She had bought the machines and she serviced them. She had Smart. routes that she had created. She had a laundromat uh, machine somewhere and she all these little mom and pop things she had put together. She had probably had more money than my dad had. Who's paying her? His housekeeper. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And you know what you call that? <laughs> Multiple streams of income. Yeah, you know it's not you Wasn't know it's not something that no. a lot of people are going to write home about. No, but there's a book called The Millionaire Next Door. Yes, I've and read that's that book. What it talks about yes, that's exactly a, that's a book you should put in The Millionaire Next Door. She was the millionaire next door. She exactly. had been quietly living a quiet life and taken every nickel she could and plowed into something that made her money that she could control. And most of them were little side hustles, side businesses, coin op machines. She didn't. She would run around, hustle, change these things, and fix them. And she was real good at that. And uh, I thought, my God. But guess what? It's a mindset, Paul. Yeah. It always has been, and it always will be. 
Well, I appreciate the mindset that you bring us each and every week. If somebody wants to know more about changing their mindset and use you not just as an advisor, hey, tell me what to do, but coach me, push me, uh, keep me on the right path. How do they find you? now? Because you're not just Tyrone French financial advisor. You're Tyrone French. It says so right on the sign behind you. Well, I tell you what, they, I made it easy. Just go to tyronefrench.coach, tyronefrench.coach, or uh, just send me a text message. Just text Tyrone to 36260. Well, I hope in the coming uh, months ahead, as you've done in the past, you'll give us some tan- – not just kicking this in the butt and say, come on, wake up. you got to change the way you're living here. It's so easy. Take a step. Don't just get excited for the moment. Do something. Uh, but to, you actually give people some tangible steps on what to do, and you week in and week out remind them, come on, you're holding us all accountable here. I think it's a valuable exercise to tune in each and every week, and I appreciate what you do for me. You kick me in the butt, too, I and I, I need a lot more butt kicking. Well, Paul, I, tell you, I appreciate just having this platform to where I can much vent or share right. the knowledge and experience that I've had over the years, and I've seen things. I've had you know, multi-million dollar clients. I mean, I know what works. Yeah. I know what doesn't work. And for 95% of the population, they really have to just focus on, you know, creating those right the habits. They creating the habit of being wealthy, right? And that comes with just a decision of saying, you know what, uh, I'm tired of working for money. I want to start focusing on my asset column. I want to start creating income that's working for me versus me turning around and working for my income. I don't want to work for money. I want money to work for me. All right, Tyrone exactly. French, you're a genius. It's the simple things in life that make the big biggest differences. I'm convinced of it. Uh, and uh, each and every week, uh, tune in here at OC Talk Radio as we continue to talk about closing the wealth gap. This show is a production of OC Talk Radio, Orange County's only community radio station. Brought to you by Tyrone French and Associates. If you need help closing your own wealth gap, give them a call and find out how you can stop from falling behind and get ahead for once in your life. <laughs>